All right, let's answer a few more questions about building confidence intervals. Um, this graph over here is a special kind of graph. You'll remember that I said that in order to do a T distribution, you either need 30 people in your sample or more, or you need uh, to have your data come from a normal distribution. And the reason that you can do 30 or more and have it not be normal is because of something awesome called the central limit theorem that I'll probably talk about later. Um, but in any case, so the question is, is you pull a sample that's probably kind of small, and the question is, is it a normal distribution? Is it a bell curve? Does your data come from a bell curve? And there's actually a test you can do to see if your data is from a bell curve or if it's from some other type of distribution. And that test is called a normal quintile plot. It's really clever, and it does a lot of really in, in intricate math, and so we're not going to get into it. But the point is, is that you do, the, the computer runs all the data, and you get a graph. And these dots are your data points. Here's how it works. If your data is a bell curve, if it comes from a normal distribution, the dots should fall on this line, and the line will tell you where your z-score or your t-score is when it intersects this axis right here. So if this was from a normal distribution, the z-score would be about negative 0.8, maybe a little less, negative 0.7, okay? However, you can see that here the dots do not go along the line, and so that means that it's neither distribution applies. You can't do t or z because the dots are not on the line. So again, the way this works is if your data comes from a bell curve or forms a bell curve, your dots should fit on that line very nicely. Okay, let's talk about the t-distribution a little bit more. You'll remember that for z, we had this beautiful bell curve where 0 was in the middle and the standard deviation was 1. That's your standard normal distribution that we already talked about a bit. t is a little bit different. t, the bell curve, actually changes based on how big your sample size is. And the bigger and bigger your sample size, the closer and closer it gets to being like the z standard deviation, but it does vary a little bit based on how big your sample size is. So, um, and so the correct answer here, um, which of the following, oh, I've left off a sentence. It should say right here, which of the following is not a property. of the student t distribution. Student was the name, a pseudonym of the name of the person who invented this test. Anyway, which of the following is not a property? So the t distribution does have the same general bell shape, but it reflects the greater variability expected with small samples. That is true. It does have a mean of zero as well, and it is a different shape for different sample sizes. It is not true that the standard deviation is one, so that is false, and so therefore that's the correct answer. Um, okay, fill in the blank. What is the blank is the best point estimate of the population mean? The answer is the sample mean. So just like when we did the proportion one and the actual proportion from our sample was the best point estimate, same thing from our, for our mean. The sample mean is the best point estimate for the population mean, and we construct the confidence interval around the sample mean. Okay, we're almost done with chapter seven. One video to go and one more formula to show you. We're gonna be figuring out sample sizes. See you in the next one.